Since the beginning of time, God has been with us. Esne Catholic Radio presents Empowered by the Spirit, a program based on the teachings of Christ with Deacon Steve Greco. Prepare your heart to receive the Word of God. Hello, everyone. This is Deacon Steve Greco, and we're back on Empowered by the Spirit. Our focus tonight is everyday healing power. Jesus loves us so much that he wants to heal us spiritually, physically, emotionally, in every way possible. He wants to heal families. He wants to heal marriages. He wants to heal us because he loves us so much. We're here with my lovely wife of 42 years, Marianne Greco. Welcome back, Marianne. Thank you, Steve. It's great to have you here back on the show. And also, back by popular demand, Katie Hughes, a prayer group leader for us at Spirit Filled Hearts. Welcome back, Katie. Thank you. Well, Jesus loves us so much that he came to earth, and by his stripes, we are healed. You know, no one can outdo his generosity. No one can outdo how much he loves us. And you think about his public ministry, Marianne, everywhere he went, he prayed for people and they were healed. Yes, he, he did. He, he did so for various reasons. I think he, first of all, he did it because he loves everyone and he wants, he doesn't want to see people suffer, but he also, his healings were part of his ministry to get our attention. That when people were healed, he expected them in many times to go out and, and spread the word and, and it would get people's attention of the day and, and say, who is this guy? The healing that Jesus did when he walked the earth was basically focusing on really proving the fact that he was the Messiah. He was the Son of God and that the Father indeed was with him. But he was also healing because he knew that we were broken. One of the greatest healing passages that I know is in Ephesians 1, where it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavens. He chose us before the foundation of the world, be holy and without blemish. To have every spiritual blessing, Katie, means that he is showering his love upon us. And when we're open to that, that's the beginning of all healing. Yes, our, our Father has so many blessings for us, and we have to be open to them and um, ask for them. And He wants to use those blessings and the healing to help us in our lives and to also to help others in our life with their healing through prayer. A big part of what we're asked to do, and we see it at the in the Gospel of Mark, where we're given our marching orders to go out and make disciples of all nations. You know, he tells us he tells us basically to lay hands on the sick, and that they will be healed. And it's so important that we recognize that that meant all of us. That just didn't mean the disciples at the time. That meant all of us. And we see that again in the scripture that says that whoever believes and is baptized will be saved and signs will accompany them. They will drive out demons, they'll speak new languages, and they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. And this is in Mark 16, 18. So they'll lay hands on sick and they will recover. That didn't say, well, maybe they'll recover. But every single time that we pray for healing, there is some type of healing. It could be spiritual healing. It could be physical healing, emotional healing. It could be healing of relationships. And that's because of how much Jesus loves us. The foundation of all healing indeed is love. But it starts with spiritual healing so often. We see this in the Gospel of Mark. And as many of you remember, the paralytic that was lowered through the roof, and everyone was amazed the fact that the very first thing Jesus said was that his sins were forgiven. It is our spiritual well-being that is the greatest priority. 
And only after his sins were clean that Jesus said, get up and walk. You know, one of the core foundations, Marianne, for healing is the fact that we have to believe. We know from Hebrews 11:6 6, it says it's impossible to please God without faith. And one of my famous stories is out of Matthew 9, when two blind men approached Jesus, asked to be healed, and Jesus answered with a question, a question that he's asking us on this show. He's asking you out there, you who have been asked to listen into this show. He's asking you this question. Do you believe, do you believe that I can heal you? And the blind man said, yes, I believe. And Jesus said, well, to the extent that you believe is the extent that you'll be healed. Why is that important, Marianne? Well, I think so many of us don't really believe Jesus will heal us. We hear, he'll hear stories about it. But it's so important for us to express our faith and to actually come to Jesus with that open heart. I mean, he's a savior. God, the creator of the universe, can do anything. And we have to come to that personal relationship with Jesus to believe that, to really acknowledge who he is. He is everything, and he can do that. And so we need to have that faith to receive the healing. Otherwise, a lot of people, I think, are just block their healing by their unbelief or thinking I'm not worthy or I'm not good enough. As well as the person, I think often we don't even stop and pray for healing for other people because we we think we're not worthy to do that either. It, it goes on both sides. We need that faith. It just breaks my heart. Yeah, I go all over uh, the nation actually and, and certainly all over California and we pray for many, many people, healing services, healing masses, and so forth. And so many people, you know, they, they don't think they're going to be healed, or they don't think that what they're praying for really matters to God. It does matter. And Absolutely. We, and you remember the fact that Jesus told us in Hebrews that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And Jesus is a healer. Jesus loves us. And Jesus wants us to take on the mantle of healing. John 14, 12. Whoever believes in me will do the works that I do and greater ones. And greater ones, Katie, because I go to the Father. And whoever believes they will do the works will indeed do them. So they will, we will do what Jesus did. And that's something we've seen in our ministry of spirit-filled hearts. We've seen these incredible miracles. Because we basically take on that mantle and say, yes, Lord, I believe. Yeah. Um, people, when they come to the prayer meetings, some do have do have the belief. And, you, and when you feel that, when you pray with them, there is this healing, whether it's physical or emotional, spiritual, and they, they walk away um, feeling the Lord's love and feeling healed in some way and assured um, and so it's just key to that to for any healing to occur it's got to have the faith and the belief you know that it's so important that we open up our hearts for me which is the next for me is june 14 7 to 9 p.m st louis van seaton church nine hill gate in the city of irvine We've seen miracle after miracle after miracle. We've seen cancers that are healed, arthritis that's healed, relationships that are healed, many, many things. But you must open your heart to believe. So, Lord, we lift a prayer up right now through the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus for everyone listening in to receive the gift of faith so that as you're listening, you now assume the fact that Jesus, Jesus is your Lord and Savior. You believe that Jesus is your Lord and Savior. You open up your heart. You take on that mantle, Father. We pray right now for that gift of faith to descend upon every man, woman, and child listening in. In the name of Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit, that gift of faith as big as a mustard seed, so that you may turn to that mountain, that mountain 
of in the mountain of pain, that mountain of, that you have of, of unforgiveness, that mountain of the physical problem, of a cancer, of a depression, of a relationship that's broken, financial problems. You turn to those mountains and you say, gone in the name of Jesus Christ, and you believe that Jesus is healing them. We thank you, Lord, for that gift of faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, we can confidently say that when we believe in Jesus and trust Him and surrender to His love, we will see incredible miracles. In Acts 1.8, we are told that you receive power, which is translated into dynamite, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses to the end, ends of the earth. This healing power... You know, we saw because of Jesus' death on the cross, Isaiah 53, 4 and 5. It was our infirmities he bore, our suffering he endured. By his stripes we are healed. By his death, Marianne, we are healed. And that death on the cross opens the door with the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus for all healing. Yes, and, and the thing that strikes me is Sometimes we think we have to be in just the right circumstance or go to a prayer meeting to, to pray for healing or to ask for healing. But it, it can occur every day and in simple situations. It can be simple healings, uh, just as simple as your child falls down and scrapes his knee. And you can take that time and stop and pray and ask for God to heal that at that moment. And we forget that this could be a continual way of lifestyle. This, uh, it, does, it can be big healings, but we can also ask for those little scrapes in our lives, and, and those can be healed as well. And I think we need to remember to use that gift all the time. As a mother and a grandmother, and we talk about every single day we can be instruments of healing, what are some examples, again, as, as a parent, as, as someone who... Um, regardless of whether you're a parent or not, but things that we can do for those that we love around us. Well, just for anybody, if you if someone cuts their finger, you can just say, may I pray for it right now? I mean, it could be that simple. I, I often, with my grandchildren, they'll come in crying, they've cut themselves or, or scraped their knee or something, and, and I'll just put my hand on the wound and I'll say, Jesus, please heal this. In the name of Jesus, be healed. And my grandchild always stops crying. I mean, it just calms them down. It refocuses, asks God to come in and do the healing. We can do that all the time for just little things with people as we're going through the day. If you can do it for yourself. If you, if you twist your ankle getting out of the car or something and it's a little strained, we can ask Jesus to heal it immediately. We don't have to to wait for something. We can just take it right to God, right away. We're going to focus on the word healing as something for you to remember on how you can be part of that healing every single day. So we'll take the word healing and take each letter. The H stands for holiness. Now, we are told by the Lord to be holy. To be holy as the Father is holy. The foundation of being healed is to let the love and the power of the Lord and the holiness flow through us. But we have to be a vessel of holiness. One way of doing that, Katie, is by turning to the Holy Spirit. In Luke eleven thirteen, it says, How much more will the Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The Holy Spirit is such an important part of the healing process, that, that power. But we must want the Holy Spirit to our own self and ask for the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is um, what Jesus left it was a gift. Um, and we are to use the Holy Spirit in a special way where in every moment of our day, we welcome the Holy Spirit to work in our heart. Um, to change us, to heal us. Um, and that brings us closer to God, our Father. It brings us closer to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Um, when we become closer to God, we're able to serve Him better. We're able to love His children better. 
Um, and with that, you know, we're doing his work. One of my most favorite books is um, a book by Mother Teresa, No Greater Love, No Greater Love. And in this book, it talks about healing an awful lot, and it talks about holiness, and they have a chapter of holiness. And, and Mother Teresa talks about quoting St. Teresa to be a little pencil in his hand. And she says, holiness is not a luxury for the few. It's not just for some people. It is meant for you and for me and for all of us. It's a simple duty because if we learn to love, we learn how to be holy. But to be holy, we need to have humility. We need to understand as God's power in us. But we have to hunger and thirst for that holiness. We have to want to be used by the Lord. We have to want to be an instrument of his healing. And when we do that, Marianne, when we seek him with all of our heart, soul, might, and strength, when we when we look at the beauty of his flesh and drink of his blood daily, but why don't we? Katie, when you go to Mass every day, which I know you do, what a difference that makes as it relates to your own personal healing and praying for other people. Um, it's a celebration um, at Mass and at the Holy Eucharist. And when I immediately, when I receive the Holy Eucharist, I my heart my heart leaps for that that moment. Um, it's a precious moment, and it does. It's Jesus is in me um, physically in in the food, the sustenance He gives, and and it also, he's feeding my soul with his love, um, of his his sacrifice, you know, and he's sacrificing, he lays down his life for us every time that he's on the altar and and it's been, the bread has been changed and the wine has been changed into him. And it's a reminder that he's constantly sacrificing and um, that's how much he loves us. He'll do it over and over again. That just reminds me that when we do go to receive the Holy Eucharist, that's a moment. We have opportunities for healing every single time we go up to receive communion. You know, what do we say? We say, Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. We are asking for healing right there. And yet how many of us approach that open for the healing that the Lord wants to give us at that moment. The greatest moment that we have every single day, every day healing power, every single day that we receive the body and blood of Christ, that moment after we receive the body and blood of Christ is a moment of a profound healing, spiritual healing, emotional healing, physical healing. I often love to pray over people after they receive the body and blood of Christ because that's when they're most susceptible to God's healing, God's love, God's power. So when you receive the Eucharist, when you receive the Blessed Sacrament, pray for healing for those around you. I, I look at the people around me and I pray for their healing spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and physically. I pray for marriages. I pray for healing physically. We've seen cancers be healed at Mass, right after Mass, when we prayed over people. It is an amazing, amazing experience. The healing of the soul occurs. And we are instruments of that healing power. It's absolutely awesome. The A in healing stands for assist. To receive healing, be an instrument of healing to pray for other people to assist with praying for them. Marianne, you have a big smile on your face. Well, I was just thinking, I'd like to challenge our listeners. We talked about how powerful it is to receive the Eucharist and, and to pray for healing. That after they receive the Eucharist on Sunday, if they only go Sundays, to take that challenge and go out and maybe you talk to someone right after Mass or... If you don't talk to anyone right after Mass, maybe a few hours later. But listen, really listen. I challenge you to listen to people and what they're saying and and 
Generally, you'll find that there's something that needs to be healed in their life. So I challenge you to look this week. When you go to Mass, do you receive that? Go and, and say, what can I pray for this person for? God's put that person right in front of you. So one of the most important things that we can communicate to you on this radio show on this particular moment in time is that every single Mass is a healing Mass. Every single Mass has Jesus there healing us. But we have to say yes to that. We have to pray over people when we see them. And when, I, when we walk outside, um, we often lay hands on people. And we see people coming up to us all the time who are asking for prayer, people that we don't even know. They see us praying over someone, and they'll come, they'll bring their children, or they'll come and... They'll ask for blessings of, of a husband and wife or blessings of an illness, of a cancer, blessings of someone who is sick, a child or whatever it might be. But Jesus wants us to love his people. And the best time to do it is right there after we receive the body and blood of Christ and at the end of Mass outside. Rather than just chit-chatting and whatever, which is all fine, but God wants us to love his people. Yes, he wants us to love and to listen to them and listen with love so that you can actually hear hear what their needs might be, where you can be that instrument or that pencil that uh, Mother Teresa talked about. So we have to be open to the prompting of the Holy Spirit. We have to be open to the fact that you have been called to be a healer. You know, we see in 1 Corinthians 12 that we have the gift of healing that some will have it. But I believe the reason why, quote, some will have it is because we have to be open to ask for it and to want it. But we certainly hope that you're enjoying this show. God has called you to listen in to be healed. And many of you right now are being healed of cancers. Yes, in the name of Jesus, be healed. In the name of Jesus, be healed. I see several eye disease being healed right now, including macular degeneration. I see a number with high blood pressure that are being healed. There's an arrhythmia being healed in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Expect God's miracles. Expect God's miracles. Well, we at Spirit Filled Hearts, which is the name of our ministry that, that the three of us have, are partners with the Sower Ministry, with this radio show. And we're so excited to be on this show We'd love to hear more from you as to what we can do to better make a difference in your life. We'd like you to contact us by email at empowered at spiritfilledhearts.org. That's empowered at spiritfilledhearts.org. And if, if you come back to us, we will certainly listen. We'll be praying for you. So let us know how we can make a difference. So just in summary, before we take a break, just know that first and foremost, how much Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you with an eternal love. Jesus loves you so much that he died on the cross for your sins. Jesus loves you so much that he's asked you to listen to this show so that you can be healed spiritually, emotionally, and physically. There are three marriages right now that are being healed. In the name of Jesus Christ, we praise you, we worship you, we glorify you for that healing. There's a son who has a, a very bad methamphetamine problem that's being healed right now. And I see three daughters that have left the church that are returning back. God's miracles are flowing. We have to open our hearts to them. I see several, several young men who are in prison that are being healed right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I see several drug addictions that are being healed in the name of Jesus Christ. I see an alcohol addiction that's being healed in the name of Jesus Christ. So just in summary again on this first part of the show, we must have faith, faith as big as a little child. We must believe that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We must believe that we're, we are instruments of his peace, instruments of his healing, instruments of his love. We must want to be used by him and to seek him with all of our heart, soul, might, and strength. We must love him with all that we have. We must love his people. 
we must realize that we are not the healer. Jesus is the healer. All we need to do is say yes to him, that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he told his disciples to go forth, to lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. We must understand the fact that when we expect great miracles, they'll happen. Well, I pray blessings upon you. We're here to take a short break. We'll be back soon to talk about the rest of how God wants to use us with, to be instruments of his love and instruments of his healing. Hello, this is Deacon Steve Greco, and we're back here on Empowered by the Spirit, focusing on everyday healing power. We're looking at the word healing. We're talking about the critical nature of holiness, of going to Mass whenever possible daily, receiving the Eucharist, receiving the power of His love through that Eucharist. We're talking about assisting other people when we really are conduits of His love to go and assist other people. It could be feeding them food. It could be just praying over them. It could be whatever it might be. Amazing, amazing miracles happen. So now we're on love, which is the L. The L standing for love is the foundation of all healing because God is love. What I've seen in our ministry at Spiritual Hearts and I've been a prayer group leader for about 35 years, is that when you are the instrument of his love, when you just let his love flow through you, when you ask to see others through his eyes, when you truly, truly love with all of your heart God's people and the Lord, that's when great miracles happen. And Marianne, often those miracles happen with those closest to you, such as a husband or a wife. And we experienced that when you were in your 30s and you had crippling arthritis in, in your in your hands. And what yes. happened then? Well, all of a sudden my, my hands started just aching and I got so bad that I couldn't even pick up coins like a nickel. I could not even pick up a nickel out of my coin purse and, and give it to anybody. So I went to the doctor and he diagnosed me with um, osteoarthritis, and my whole body ached. And I was up to, this is a long time ago, and they didn't have the medicines they have today, but I was up to 16 aspirin a day. I had to be regulated for it. It was very severe, and I ached and all the time. But you, Steve, with your love, just decided to pray for me every day. And it was really your love and your consistency. I don't think I had the feeling that I, I could be healed. It was discouraging, but your love carried through with your prayer. And it, it was pretty amazing. I think it's actually 24 pills a day, if I remember correctly. And, you know, and it went down to 16. You were at 16 for quite a while, then 12, then 8, then 6. And one day you said, I don't think that... I need it anymore. And what I particularly asked the Lord, and that's when I first learned that you have to pray in love. Mm -hmm. You have to let God's love, because love is what heals. In Jesus' name, Jesus is the healer. And it's so important. And we also saw that when we were praying over our children. You know, I, I think one of the things that we forget is that we don't have to have the big fancy words for healing either. We, we can just pray in love. You know, just our love is this, this instrument that comes through. And there's been many opportunities to pray for our children. I recall one of the times when our son was about three years old. He was in um, preschool. He went every day. And he got impetigo, which is a skin disease that has scabs, and it's very contagious. And I had to take him to the doctor, and he had to stay out of school. And the doctor said, boy, this is bad, and it's going to get worse. He may be out another week because it has to be totally cleared before he can go back to school. So I took him home, and that night it really occurred to me how Jesus healed the lepers of skin diseases. So when I was tucking him in for bed, I said, 
you know, we could pray to Jesus to heal this. And so I said the prayer, and my son accompanied me of this little innocent heart. And then he looked down on his arms. There were lots of scabs all over his arms. And he said to me, it's still here. And I went, oh, my gosh, what have I done? I've told my child that Jesus is going to heal him, and it's, it's not it's not gone instantly. So I just, in love, I said, you know, sometimes it takes Jesus a little while. We'll see. He went to bed. He woke up the next morning, and all of the scabs had disappeared, which is incredible because the doctor had said that they would be, you know, another week probably before he would be healed. So, you know, we have these opportunities, and of course, I think his faith probably carried us through more the faith of a child. He believed instantly that Jesus was going to do it for him. I, I had doubts, but I had the love for my son, and I said the prayer. He also had pneumonia one time, too, right? Yes, he had pneumonia really bad. He was in sixth grade and quite sick. He had been back and forth with the doctor, and it was very bad pneumonia. And he had a big sixth grade outing where they go go away in Catalina, which is an island where they uh, go swimming and snorkeling. And he was going to miss it because he was so sick. And we had a prayer meeting in our house that night and some woman came and we she had the faith in a sense to call us to pray for him I think and we all just in love prayed for him and he instantly felt better the next day he woke up and all the symptoms were gone and he was able to go to that outdoor for a week and swim and snorkel in the cold Pacific Ocean without have it. He came home healthier than all the other children who went, quite frankly. When you expect miracles, they happen. When you expect God's love to flow, they happen. And even in the middle of adversity, when you call upon that love, and some of you may remember a story, I think I've given this before, but it was so unbelievably powerful. And that is when our, at the time, six-year-old daughter went through a plate glass window and ended up you know, basically having cuts and wounds from her face that we couldn't even see because there's so much blood and cuts throughout her body. And quite frankly, she could have easily died. Um, you know, she could have had a vessel se severed. But not only did that not happen, but she didn't have a single uh, tendon cut, a, a single muscle cut. And she was able to be healed despite 300 stitches and she went through a miraculous recovery, miraculous, uh, like three hours of, of uh, surgery in terms of plastic surgery. But we prayed in the spirit for her. We prayed fervently for her. We prayed in love for her. And it was amazing. And what was it that the plastic surgeon said when he came out of surgery? Well, he said, first of all, he was surprised that he was able to spend that much time working on a young child because she was six years old without having to put her under an anesthesia, that she was, he was able to do it all with local, and that she had incredible amount of calmness on her, as well as none of the muscles were cut. I had such an incredible, blessed experience in, in being part of God's healing ministry, because it is his, his healing ministry. And Katie, I, I know that you're part of that ministry, and you, you're such an important, critical part. And what's it like to be able to be an instrument of that love when you pray over people? I mean, don't you look at them differently and just feel God's love just pulsating through you? I do. When I've emptied myself of me personally and I allow Jesus to fill me with his love and allow the Holy Spirit to fill me, um, then you become this powerful instrument for God to use to heal to heal his children who um, you know have family problems or physical problems and um, it's so wonderful when they walk away from you and they've transformed and you know it was the love of Jesus it's just amazing uh, one of the things that was so important for me was an experience I had uh, working for a healthcare company, 
And one of my sales representatives uh, came up to me and said that she was pregnant. And she had a look of incredible fear in her eyes. And the reason there was so much fear is because she had had such a difficult pregnancy before and almost lost the child and almost lost her life. And she didn't know what this was going to be like. And I immediately asked permission to pray over her. And we actually were calling on hospitals. And, and so I prayed in a hospital garage parking lot over her. And then every time I saw her, which was about every three or four weeks, I prayed over her in a different hospital and a different parking lot. And she often, for the first time, she never went to full term. But she went to complete full term. And you could see every single time I prayed over her, I prayed in love. I prayed that God's love would flow through me. Well, when she came to deliver the child, an interesting, amazing thing happened. The, this, the, uh, the OB there, the obstetrician that was delivering the baby, um, it was actually through a C-section, cesarean section, all of a sudden just gasped. And never course, want to hear that. You never want to hear that. You never want to hear that, you know, and it was... I mean, could you imagine? I mean, she was still awake. And it was like, uh, And the reason for that is that the placenta wall was so paper thin that afterwards she said that it was an absolute miracle. There is no way that the mother should have survived, let alone the baby survived, because it was just so thin. She just couldn't, had never seen anything like it. Well, a few weeks after that, I had a dream. The baby, of course, was healthy and is healthy. And I had a dream, and the Lord showed me all the different garages that I prayed over her and prayed over her in love and showed me the fact that, that his love flowing through me is what sustained her life and the life of the baby. You know, Steve, I think it's interesting we, we pray for people sometimes in our prayer groups that we, we know, and sometimes there's people we don't even know, and yet you say, well, how can I pray in love? But you take on this this uh, being the instrument of God and, and wanting to love them through, through you. And I found so often I'll be praying for someone, or you'll be praying the words, but I'll be praying with you. And God gives me this gift of tears. I mean, you just, you feel this love flowing through your body so that I am just um, passionately loving that person to the point where I feel the tears for them and what they're going through. And so it's an incredible experience to have that love flowing through you as you're praying. And certainly everybody feels that who has done it. Now, this leads us to the next letter in healing, and that's the I. And the I stands for intercession. How important is it to be, to intercede for others? Well, we certainly can learn from Jesus. In Hebrews 7.25, it states, He is able to save those who approach Him. He lives forever to make intercessions for them. Jesus is our intercessor. The Blessed Mother is our intercessor. And if we are to be like Jesus, like the Blessed Mother, we must learn to intercede with love. You know, you mentioned uh, what we call kind of spirit-filled tears and the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. tears. Katie, I know that when you're interceding at Mass for others and you use Mass as an incredible time for prayer and intercession, you often have tears in your eyes and let God's love just flow through you as you're praying for other people. Usually when that happens, I'm praying for a family member or someone that's in our prayer line who needs um, great healing in their life, whether it's physical or emotional. And um, usually it's after communion. It's, it's kind of all tied in when you can use that love prayer and the love of Jesus that's within you and the Holy Eucharist and it's um, you realize how powerful Jesus' love is and God's love for all of us and and when you feel all that love it, it has to go somewhere and 
it definitely goes to the you know to the tear ducts and in your whole being you just ache for that person and and uh, you know some of it's like sympathy sympathy pain some people might call it but it's healing love and um, it's very powerful and uh, and it's a wonderful way to pray for people it's compassion right yeah it's being compassionate like the lord is and the root word of compassion is bearing the sufferings of others and often we're crying because we feel the pain as jesus feels our pain and you know steve i i was thinking about this is interceding for others and we're talking about everyday healing and i'd like to say a little bit about that everyday healing is how can we intercede every day well so often the Holy Spirit might remind you of a person's name and you might not even know why to pray for them. But when someone comes to mind, I really encourage you listeners to pray for them, pray for the healing. Um, that's the Holy Spirit asking you to intercede for those people. That, that's really a great point, Marianne. God will put in your mind, and often during the middle of the night, I'll wake up and some somebody will will pop in my mind and to pray for them and I had an amazing experience this morning as I was praying for a good friend of mine named Ted and um, he's going through a hard time and we're praying right now for his complete healing of his eyes and and God said uh, for me to pray for him and I was praying fervently for him and um, been praying for quite some time and God said we'll give him a phone call and we had a prayer meeting this morning and a Bible discussion and I go outside the car and I pick up my phone and someone's calling me it's him and uh, and th that's what God does I mean yes. when, when, when you love somebody when you intercede for somebody God just puts you together with them so listen to those promptings by the Holy Spirit because he really is talking to us and asking us to intercede for those people. Now, one of the most important scriptures is James 5.16. Pray for one another that you may be healed, and the fervent prayer of a righteous person is very powerful. Those that, And the word righteous means following the will of the Father, following the will of God. What is God's will? God's will that is that all men be saved. God's will is that we be healed spiritually not only emotionally and physically, but whatever is best for us. And we don't know why some people that we pray for are not healed physically. We won't know that till we're with the Lord. But we do know that God loves us all and that every single time that we pray for, for someone, there is some type of healing. You know, one of the things that's interesting, we've been the Lord's before and we've seen the many miracles and, and so many people who come there. And it's often said that those who come to pray for other people to be intercessors are often experience the greatest healing. In Ezekiel, the book of Ezekiel, we are told that we are watchmen for one another, that we must stand in the gap of the wall for one another. You know, an example of this, Marianne, was a, an experience that we, uh, we saw in detention ministry as you and I spent many years in the detention ministry praying over men and women. There's a woman who came up to me, and I'll never forget her, mm -hmm. um, and she basically said, um, uh, you know, I whispered in her ears, who would you like me to pray for? And often they say, you know, pray for myself, pray for my family, and so forth. Or pray for healing, the physical healing, whatever. She says, pray for my bunkie, though that individual she was bunking with who was standing behind me who had no one to pray for her and I was so moved by that love that she recognized the fact that she was praying in love for this woman who she shared a cell with that had no one to pray for her and that's what it means to have intercessory prayer, to pray in love I think too, so often our illnesses or our weaknesses are the Things that bring us to pray for other people that have the same disease or illness or weakness. That that's a very powerful prayer to put those people together to pray. 
those uh, people we know that have cancer, we ask them to pray for other people who have cancer. And um, things like that we can turn you know, to good and pray for others and intercede for them. We had an experience a couple of weeks ago at our, at our prayer meeting um, in which a woman came up to me in love, praying for her aunt that had had a brain aneurysm and was in critical condition. And she said, let me stand in for her. And that's exactly what so many people do, is that they stand in as, that, as the centurion did, in a sense, of standing in for his servant. We can go before other people and ask them to pray for someone we represent. I think that's important. And she was representing her aunt, and I saw her a week later, and her aunt was miraculously healed in the hospital. Praise God. Through that love, through that intercession. The end stands for nullify in healing. To be healed and be an instrument of healing, we need to have our sins forgiven. We need to be healed of unforgiveness. And the great, greatest way of doing that is reconciliation. The greatest way of doing that is making sure we go at least monthly to reconciliation. You know, Mother Teresa would go often daily to reconciliation. The popes go daily. It's so important that we get cleansed of our sins cleanse of those areas that are, are obstacles for us. That's a part of healing that becomes so important. It's so important that Jesus put it in the Our Father. Forgive us our trespasses. Now, we, have to, we have to have that forgiveness uh, in order to go forward with our prayer. And the G in healing stands for gratitude. You know, one of the great healings is to pray in gratitude not praying in petition, but in gratitude. Gratitude for my beautiful wife, my beautiful friends. Gratitude for the people around you. Gratitude for what God is doing. When we had a spirit of gratitude, we are transformed into his love. We are transformed into his holiness. So let's look again at the word holiness. The eight or excuse me, the word healing. The eight stands for holiness, being made holy spiritually and in every way. When we strive for holiness, we are in the process of being healed spiritually, and we are healed spiritually. The E stands for the Eucharist. Go to daily Mass. Receive the Blessed Sacrament. You'll see great miracles when you believe in the real presence of Jesus Christ. The A stands for assisting others through prayer and service. To go out of your way to find people that are hurting. The L stands for love, which is the foundation of all healing. The more that we're transformed into the love of God, the more that we are healed. The I stands for intercession. We are called to be intercessors. As words, as names pop into our head, intercede for them. Intercede for those that are hurting. The N stands for nullify. Go to reconciliation. Have your sins nullified. Have your unforgiveness healed. The G stands for gratitude. We must be instruments of gratitude. Every single day can be a day of healing. Every single day is a day of healing, but we must say yes to him. Another area of saying yes to is the sower ministry because it is a phenomenal ministry. And this coming evening, May 16th, is one special night. There's a gathering at St. Francis of Rome Catholic Church, 501 East Foothill Boulevard in the city of Azusa. From 7.30 to 9.30 p.m. this Friday evening, a very special speaker, Noel Diaz, the founder of El Simbador, is joining us. He started this ministry 30 years ago with 10 people, and now it is all over, three states, several countries, AM, TV. Uh, it's amazing. The SOAR ministry, the English version in 2008, was started uh, by Noel and also with Joseph Borba as director. So come to hear Noel's inspiring message this Friday evening 
at St. Francis of Rome Catholic Church. Join us there and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Also, would like you to uh, contact the SOAR prayer line at 877-71-GLORY, 877-714-85679, an opportunity to pray for others, an opportunity for intercession. To learn more about the SOAR ministry, visit the website at JesusTheSower.com. That's JesusTheSower.com. As mentioned before, this radio program is a collaboration between the Spirit-Filled Hearts Ministry that we're part of and the SOAR Ministry. Please also visit our website at spiritfilledhearts.org. That's spiritfilledhearts with an S.org. Like us on Facebook at facebook.com backslash spiritfilledhearts. And follow us on Twitter at spiritheartsone. Spirit Hearts 1. We have our next prayer meeting with Spirit Filled Hearts at St. Elizabeth Ann Seton Church, 9 Hillgate in the city of Irvine on June 14th at 7 to 9 p.m. Now, we also, next week, will be focusing on emotional healing or inner healing. We have so many scars from childhood, so many scars from being hurt emotionally by co-workers, by family members, by those perhaps who have abused us or those who have betrayed us or those that simply have hurt us emotionally. Listen next weekend for that healing. And the following week, we'll be focusing on family healing, relationship healing, healing of marriages. Yes, healing is the cornerstone of what we're all about. Heavenly Father, we love you with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And we pray healing blessings upon all those listening in, that they be healed emotionally, physically, mentally, and spiritually. That they be healed of tumors in the name of Jesus. Healed of migraine headaches in the name of Jesus Christ. That they be healed with prostate cancer and breast cancer.